Let's read John 11. John 11 from verse 1. John 11 from verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, of the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. The sisters, therefore, sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is what? Sick. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. Five, now, Jesus loved Martha, and a sister, and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he abode at that time two days in the place where he was. Then after, his, after this he said to his disciples, let us go into Judea. Again, the disciples say unto him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone thee. And goest thou thither again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, can you see the, the verse 10? But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because the light is not in him. Amen. These things spake he. After this, he said unto them, Our Lazarus, our friend Lazarus, is fallen asleep, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading this. I found that one of our weakness is because we cannot see the future. Jesus reminded uh, us a lot that we are able to descend the, the times. We are able to descend the weather. But we cannot descend the times. We cannot see what will happen tomorrow. Same applies to what we are reading here. Ask somebody, say, are you being threatened? Is there anything that is threatening you? If we read here, we see threats. I want us to write this message. It's very important for all of us. Overcome threats. I mean, when you are being threatened, how is your response towards those threats? It is possible that threats can hinder you not to do this. Well. Jesus was in danger. And the Jews wanted to kill him. And from there, the miracle of Lazarus affected more his enemies. Because the Bible says many believed in him. To extend that they thought about killing also Lazarus. That they could not kill only Jesus. They have to kill also Lazarus for the sake. To eliminate what he can do. But for Jesus to reach that state where his miracle could affect his enemies on that way. Could affect his enemies on that way. 
he was supposed to have over, he was supposed to overcome threats. And he did. He overcome his threats to achieve that I want to show you in this verse. In verse 7, Jesus said, Jesus said that he was going to be overcome by the After he has spoken, he said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Think about, this is the man that went through problems in Judea. If we can escape somewhere to go back there, it's difficult to go. You have to take some precautions to go to the place. Where Jesus was not wanted nearly being stoned. That's where he did the biggest miracle A miracle that even today we are still talking but about. there were threats that were coming to his life stopping him so that he must not go to that place. In other words, threats hinder us so that we become limited to our abilities. Tell about threats hinder you so that you become limited to your abilities. You could still see that Jesus here he was ready to die as long as as you can see beyond as the kingdom of darkness. If you the Bible says they reminded him because therefore you have to be reminded to stay limited. You must be reminded that remember so you will stay the way you are because you are afraid there will be some fears that will rise up that if you in if you carry on doing you are still going to get more pain. You are putting your life in danger. In verse 8, they remind him. They say to him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone thee. So are you going there again? Think about that. Here, they are telling him that, you see, Jews, there's nothing that they want except to stone you. Therefore, the moment they see you, they say, it's over with this you. This was a serious threat. And this was something that was supposed to have brought fear to Jesus. Where Jesus was supposed to be glorified. Listen to the answer of Jesus. Jesus' answer in verse 9. Are there are 12 hours in the day. I will tell you what Jesus was saying. He says, if a man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Jesus was saying, the light of God is still with me. I'm not trying. I don't need any other light except the light of God. I have no revelations. revelations. Where I'm going, I've been sent. I've got the light of God upon my life. As I'm going there, because God has allowed me to go, I will go and overcome. He said, the light of God, which is the day when he was trying to show, it makes me to see my enemy when he's approaching. So that I can go and carry out what God wanted me to do. If you can read here, you see that Jesus could not be threatened with the enemy. Jesus could not be threatened. Because of what he had. He is aware of what he is supposed to do and what will happen. Sometimes we need to ask God about the threats we are going through. Because such threats, they might be 
closing our eyes to make us to stay dormant. To stay stagnant. Some threats are there to make you to die where you are. Just to die where you are. I'll give you an example of what happened to me. The time where I, when I resigned my work, I was excited. But when God began to tell my wife um, to resign, I was I felt it like threatened. I could see this if now she can resign. And, 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 and she's working as an engineer like and this. And I'm getting a lot of money. You know, I was like, oh God, why are you doing this? How can you tell my wife such kind of things? I was so threatened. Uh, where are we going to get support? Where are we going to get support? God is aware. If I knew God was aware at that time, all those questions we used to ask. We spent time questioning where are we going to get our provisions. And we, ask, we don't ask God why those threats are coming to our way. The moment I agree, agree. In fact, after she has spoken that speech, I want to tell you that the day I took her to work, I was driving. And the car was like, was moving faster than the speed that I was driving. And on the road, I felt like she would say, I, you know what, I don't. Even when God told me, if she might have said, she's hearing God say, I must turn back. I said, thank you, Lord. But she was so strict. And I was like, oh, Lord, you are so strict. And you are so strict. And you are so strict. And you are so strict. One of the problems was God told me that I but must take care of it. I was angry that day. 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 I was angry that I didn't know. God had his plans. I don't know if you hear me. There's a great plan of God. Beyond the plans you are going through. There is too much edification that you will get. Upliftment that will come. Don't look at the threats. Look beyond the threats. Don't look at the threats. Look beyond. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you tell anybody? Don't look at that threat of losing a job. Don't look at that threat of sickness. Look beyond. Some times God will tell you to put you in a place where you are threatened. Seek him only. Because beyond those threats, they are blessings and success. Don't just sit there and begin to question why I'm born in this family. Why things are happening in my life. Why things are so tough. It's part of the history. It's a lesson for someone who's coming. But it is not your destiny. That's why my situations are not showing my destiny. But it's a program towards my destiny. Sometimes you have to look at the situation and see beyond that situation. You know what Jesus said here? I love it. He said, Look at this verse 12. It says, The disciples therefore say unto him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Because they could not understand what Jesus was speaking of. Now, Jesus had spoken of this death. But they thought that he speak of taking rest in place. Look at verse 14. Jesus therefore said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Can you see here now? It was not only a threat. A 
a threat of going there even to resurrect something that is beyond the power of people beyond the abilities of people have you ever found you are going to do a business where people can just, I mean, they, they, they cannot do anything. <sighs> and God say, you, go there. Go there. And you went there, you failed sometimes. But this time, God say, can you go there? And say, you the power of resurrection in you. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Most of the time, people, they don't know that <laughs> what is in you <laughs> is, what you, <laughs> is what, you, what you produce. Is what you produce. It's not what is there. There is something in you that you need to produce. And that is why the threats are coming to you. They are not coming there. I don't know if you are hearing me. I said there are threats that are coming to you. Because there is something in you. Not there. Not a place. You. So you have to be threatened. And the Bible says. He says plainly, guys, Lazarus is dead. So I'm going there to resurrect him. Ah, the disciples were supposed to have said to Jesus, ah, Jesus, ah, Jesus. Ah, no. if he's dead, allow him to be buried. Because if you go there, your life is in danger. Tell those people to bury him. Look what Thomas said here. Thomas said, Thomas, Ah, let's go and die with him. Him. You 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 see, see that that even even the people with Jesus were hopeless. hopeless. Sometimes you don't need to make people to understand <inaudible> you when God has put in your life. Because it's only you alone who understand where you are going. And also it's only you alone who is going through the challenges you are going through. I'm happy, happy about the threats. They are there because of the assignment in you. Like even if you can tell other people I don't know if you are hearing me. Shake somebody and say, my friend, what kind of threats are you getting? Overcome those threats. Let me show you from the scriptures other verses. We, we jump this one. If we read 1 Corinthians 16, 9, 16, 9. this one will really shock you. It was Paul speaking. First Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. Mm. <sighs> Read, Mama. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Paul was saying, Paul Nari, you know, where I am. God has opened doors. But how will you know that God has opened doors for me to preach them? There are many adversaries. The enemies are declaring to you that God doors are open. Tell about enemies, adversaries. They are preaching to you. That doors are open for you. If you want to see that you are, you are going somewhere, look at what you are facing. Look at the threats. Challenges around you. Challenges you. Problems. Problems. Things you are going through. Adversaries everywhere. Do you know that you will never be lifted up by God until you overcome your adversaries? And your adversaries are there to throw those arrows to you. Don't mind those arrows. 
Focus unto him. The author and the finish of your faith. See him. See where he's taking you. Therefore, you won't stop. Jesus never stopped going to Judea. Judea. Because he could still see God with him. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you want to know that doors are open for you, check everything. Your adversaries. Things rise on the left. Stories against you. Accusations. Lies against you. The moment you see something like this, begin to thank God for the opening doors. They are opening doors in front of you. Don't be afraid of threats. March towards that door. March towards the door. A door of greatness. A door of success. A door of victory. I don't know if you are hearing me. Check somebody and say, hey, I'm marching towards my door. There are some people who are here. The threats are everywhere. You know, I understand threats. I don't know if you are hearing me. Because when threats come to your way, you know, the devil always comes. Love to remind you where you come from. Satan will go put your coat on. Because threats work that way. They are there to block you. Oh, not a fellow who is a little. Now you begin to think about the pain of the past. Think about where you come from. The devil doesn't want you to think about where you are going. Satan will go put your coat on. Remember the time of Joshua. Oh, black and white. Where the threats came. I'm a church of Jehovah. It's only Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. Who said, "Hey, but our." God has spoken. We are not afraid. We are not going back. We are going forward. God is taking us to where we are going. Doors are open. I'm here to declare to you that doors are open in front of you. Don't look at what Satan is doing. What he's saying. Don't even go to your past. By your memories. By your thoughts. See the door that God has opened in front of you. There's a door open. That failure was looking for your steps to go ahead. That shame was looking for your steps to go ahead. Move forward to where you are going. Move forward to your destiny. Just as I'm going forward. You will never reach there. And you find you don't have enemy everywhere. everywhere. Adversaries. Adversaries. They block you. Do you know that adversaries, they, they are not there to kill you. They are there to close the door. So that you reason inside the cage. You don't come out from that cage. They close you in. But I'm seeing you coming out. And you begin to praise God. I'm seeing you coming out from that cage. And people will worship God. By what you want to do in your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I've seen many people. One day I called some people who were close to me. I said, I don't know. This thing happened. I will tell you this. Some people in my church were saying, Can you see how God chose you people? I said, Can you see how God chose you people? You know, that day I began to show them, always God chooses chooses the rejected. I don't know if you're hearing me. Always God will look at the rejected because he doesn't want he doesn't want to share his glory with anyone. So when the threats come your way it's to eliminate people. There are some people you don't need. Let, let them go away from you. Let them go away from me. There are some people there are some people that must be eliminated because of my door of victory door of business door of healing door of success is in front of you I see you entering there and no one will be able to block you if you believe shout hallelujah go to the book of Acts you will see you will see what happened there especially Especially in Acts chapter four. Acts chapter four. If you go there on the last verses there, you'll be surprised. Are you listening, Jamafilu Lumola? 
the threat, the threat that makes, uh, that makes these people, you know, not to stand in the work. Can you just read verse 36? Verse 36. And Joseph, yes. who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, yes. which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay. I think uh, where you are, you are reading, you will understand that there was a threat. When the threats appear, God always touches someone. But the time of the apostles, we must know that there was no one was working. They were just preaching the gospel. And there was a time where there was a complaint of food. There were other people were given food, others were not. But when threats were rising, God began to touch people and lift some people. Some threats there, therefore, for the rising of someone. There are some people that, that need to not to go by the group. And such people are the ones that God can raise by the time of threats. Can you just read about this man? Where you see the man being risen up. Can you just read about this man being risen up? When you see this man being risen up. And it brought the power of God in the place. He rose up to give everything he had to support the movement so that there will be a support. Listen, by the time of threat is the time that God raised people. People that God will use to support his There are some people that will never shake. That is why when the church is under a shake. That is why you will be surprised pastors are becoming more rich. Because by the time of the threats, it was the time that Christians God will raise them. How many of you thought the church, this church will die? When you leave that church, God is raising someone there. Can you just read that verse there? And Joseph, who was who oh, by the apostles so was son named Barnabas, uh -huh. which is being interpreted the son of consolation. Son of consolation. A Levite. A Levite. And of the, of the country of Cyprus. What is the meaning of consolation? It means there was a problem. I see that this, 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 there was a problem. And God raised this man Joseph. A son of consolation. And from there, those who were there, those who were others who were thinking they would be given names. Like Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. They try and fail. This is, this is a time that God can raise the junior. The junior business people. I don't know if you're hearing me. By the time of threats. I love threats. I love threats. Your enemy. Is focusing on what is happening to you. But your God is raising you by the time of those threats. I don't care what you are facing. Those things that you are going through might be the ones that God can use to lift your head up. I don't know if, don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. Let me prophesy someone who is listening to me. God is changing your threats to be a blessing. And he's lifting your hands. I say he's lifting you. He's choosing you. He's raising you. By the time of threats. You are going to be a child of consolation. Everybody will look at you. And get confidence. Everybody will look at you and praise the Lord. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you believe shout hallelujah. I gave you 
example of John 16. Verse. John 16. John 16 verse 33. I gave you that verse last three. In this world. 16:33 you'll face tribulation. Letla kopana le u hlomarelwa. You know that verse is a verse that you need to read all the time. Ke verse o ka ebalang mithayo yothe. It means when you 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 will be misunderstood it means that ebolela seo and you know this thing won't start from far it will start from your family don't ever think this thing is going to start from far it is going to start from your family the moment when you see something like that don't fear any threats glorify him as he is you just read that verse i love that verse a lot these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have a tribulation but be good be of good cheer i have overcome the world my god in me not in money mo gonna iseng mo tsheleteng in me not in friends mo gonna iseng mo ba khotseng in me not in family mo gonna iseng mo lapeng it says in me o re gonna not you won't get money you will find peace in the process where you are facing all this there will be peace that surpassing all this understanding but the time when you say oh god kanna ka wena o sar modimo wa ka ganeng there will be peace o tla ba le khutjo khutjo ya thailela in him mo go yena when things are tough when adi tetsile bo yima ba khotse ba yona all sides a ba ita mathakoleng ka moka ba khotse sometimes i ask people i say la go tsheleng ke botsha ba to ka re what is it that i mean you will do i mean you will do how you will behave what are the joan you went through what i went through how ka kopana le tsheng ke le ka kopana le tsona i ask myself that kind of a question ke ipotsha potsho ye I said because listen to this telejang you are equal lelekana to what you are going through le ntwe le kopanang le yona teleba you are equal to what you are going through le yona ntwe o kopanang le yona if there is no threat how can you see if you can just walk in the night wa bana no sepela bo shiyo you just wake up in the night sometimes when you are driving you see someone who like no makala o tsama ya kotseleng bo shiyo Just no, there is no threat. Number one, there is no money. I mean, it is yourself. Even if people come your way, you are know taking that. Sometimes when you are walking around there, there are some people, I'm sure they are ghosts. I don't know. I can say what they are to, they are not afraid of the dark. They know what they are doing. When you are approaching with a car, you see them, they are two, but they are like one. You see them walking like this. Like this. They walk like this. They walk like this. They look like when the car is approaching they do like, you see them only on their back you see them only on their back obona fela mikokoto ya bona ka morao because they are afraid of the light ka bana ba chaba siecha will be exposed or ba tatjela pepene neng so they know how to hide you as a christian chona ngwana o le mopholoswa you have got no place to hide a ona mo ka ipitha ngona di ntho di tota di ushape but behind that threat mara wena a ona le machushetse ya the one who will love us i don't know if you hear me i get se ba le ntwa i mean when light strikes Justifita. when people see your shame ah, they will run away, away from you but the same people they will run back to you and but ask forgiveness I don't know if you are hearing that let me that. give you this word this year God will change the threats you are going through and bring the blessing you, you are expecting even the ones above your expectations they are coming your way just have peace when nobody kucho peace kucho fela that someone won't understand it yaro motho mo a stale kwishisha a piece of just saying kucho ya o bolela hore if i die here i'm going to i ke ikgonna ke ya ha ye le hodimo 
Satan is hitting you with threats, but if I die here, I'm going to see Jesus. Somebody is insulting you. You are stupid. You are going nowhere. Or you are being rejected. Hey, I'm hearing that. But if I die here, because all of us will die one day, I have peace with my God. And I've got success in my heart. Because what is in you, by the time of manifesting, everybody will see it. What you are believing will come forth. I don't know if you are hearing it. Shake somebody and say, hey, I feel peace. It's not that you won't have problems. You know, if you want to see that people... If you want to see people who don't have problems, go to graveyard. Just go to graveyard. Just go there. Sit on that tombstone. Just sit there. You see. You just see. You just hear quiet. They are resting. By Kudiche. Those people are resting. If you are supposed to move forward, problems will come. But if you are in one state, resting like that, you see, you are resting. Even if someone stand on top of the grave, do you ever hear answer? But because you are supposed to move from A to B, someone will walk on top of your leg. You have to say, hey, why are you walking on top of my leg? What is that I have done to you? But sometimes you need to be like that man or that woman in the grave. When someone walks on top of your leg, you keep quiet like you didn't see. In your heart there is peace. You praise God even when you are feeling pain. Because every pain around you works for your benefit. I see that benefit coming your way. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. From this year, from this year, let these people who are saying you are going nowhere, let them be surprised of what God is about to do in your life if you believe, say, it will happen. So if you don't have threat, you are finished. If you don't have threat, you are what? Have you ever find that you are, you, are, you are married to a place and no one doesn't want you? You must know you are there to change everyone. Stop grumbling. Change everyone there. Have you ever found you are in a company where you are working and no one doesn't want you? Understand that you are there to be in a, for a higher position. Don't stop complaining and take your step. Your focus will take you to the glory. When they are busy, your supervisor on top of you threatening you, putting threats on you, forgive that person. Just glorify God in your heart. Carry on doing what you are doing. Very soon, you will hear they have chased that supervisor. You will be questioning what is happening. They say, no, it's you that you will take his position. You know the job. You can fight without fighting by overcoming threats. You can reach your victory and your success by overcoming those threats. Christians, they know how to fight better by being silent. When you are silent and you are focused, your destiny is assured and your victory is certain. Sometimes when you are being pressurized, and one inside you will come out and shake the whole foundation around you. I can see victory coming your way. I can see success coming your way. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, what are you going through? Do you know what happened to, to Moses? 
to the apostles, I will tell you this, but I will close. I just want to. Because I've been teaching you this. What happened to the apostles was this. After the apostles were arrested and beaten up and were threatened, don't talk about this name. And the Bible says they went back to their own. And they began to cry to God. The place where they were was shaken. And they were filled again with the Holy Spirit and power. You know, this shows that the Holy Spirit won't fill you once. And Holy Spirit will have to fill you and fill you and fill you. I don't know if you hear me. Holy Spirit must come your way. Go and read the whole book of Threads. Look at Acts chapter 12. When one man began to kill a disciple, the Bible says he killed James. And from there he was searching for Peter. And there were threats. When the threats were coming louder, he was searching for Peter. He arrested Peter. In the morning he was saying he's going to kill him. Heaven opens. The angel landed to the place. Listen, every threat there is an answer I'm here to tell you in every threat when you are being threatened you need to count your blessing to look at what devil is doing I said there is an answer I said there is an answer where there are threats there is an answer we are just fearing every threat Beyond it, there is a blessing. He who is threatening you is about to ask forgiveness. He is about to ask forgiveness. Let me stop there. Ask three people around you. What are your threats? The landlord. Hey, hearing landlord. Yeah. Landlord. Hey, Monga Pleke. Landlord, I have to pay the rent. Keep watching Charis TV.